Welcome in, folks, to another coronavirus episode of I've Got a Theory with Hennish Polical. Today, my guest is Jeff DuPont, and Jeff is up in the Washington area. And specifically, you're in Washington, right? Uh, yes, sir. Seattle. Seattle, Washington, and he's the owner of Sound Painting, which is not just a painting company. You guys do all kinds of stuff up there. Uh, we do carpentry, yeah, building fences, decks, remodels, painting houses, just about anything with construction. So. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to, to connect with you. You were introduced by a mutual friend, so excited to have you on the phone. I appreciate you listening to some, some uh, episodes with us already to kind of get the juices flowing, right? That's, that's the purpose of this theory. So I want to hear what you got to say. Let's see. Let's what's your theory today. So I think my theory is how society is going to be going less and less to college. Um, you know, succeeding with either a technical school or just going to the working force because it's, I see so many people today, my wife included, who have a degree. She, I mean, she works in our business, but they, they have a degree they're not using it. I have 10 of my employees have college degrees and they're painting. So I feel like we're going a different direction in society that to succeed, you uh, don't necessarily have to go to college, you know, and end up $60,000 in debt. Yeah, that's on the low side. You know, that's what I think about, uh, you know, especially people that are skilled tradesmen. Like a good painter can make earn good money. A good plumber, a good electrician, a good carpenter earns a pretty good living, right? No, it's not bad at all. And I just, I see more and more, this is just my personal theory, but I see more and more of society going that way, either towards like a two-year technical program, you know, even like radio, my cousin did a radiology program, you know, and making a decent living. So um, yeah, we'll see where it goes, but that's just what I... Thanks. No, it's a good theory. I mean, tell me more about it. So how do you know, how do we uh, get people to consider that? Because, you know, I feel like it's just indoctrinated into uh, Americans that you go to high school to prepare for college, you got to go to college, and then you figure it out after that, right? It doesn't matter what, yeah. what you want to get into you go to college. They tell you that, right? No, no, of course. And that was the same path that I took. You know, I, I mean, in high school, I didn't go to college, but in high school, the guidance counselor was preparing me for the SAT, you know, to apply or the ACT to apply for a four year college. I did go to the University of Oregon for one year, but uh, I think we need to get more into the schools and really talk with students. I've been really trying to get out there and educate how technical backgrounds can really take you to the next level. You know, I mean, I make a pretty good living, you know, several hundred thousand dollars a year with high school diploma. Yeah. Learned to trade. So I think we need to get out there and show the impact of what trades can do. Um, but it seems like it's more and more, even when I go to, like, say, a job fair, there's more and more technical people. Like, it used to never be sexy to be an electrician. And today, you see the IBW doing ads on, you know, on the radio saying you can make $100,000 a year as an electrician, you know. so Yeah, I mean, they're always in demand. I mean, I know we, we have a hard time finding a good electrician that can get stuff done properly on time and things like that. Uh, and my aunt owns a plumbing company down here, and she'll tell you the same thing. It's hard to find a good knowledgeable plumber that can get it done and don't, they don't have problems with. So, you know, it's interesting because I'm a little bit familiar with Germany's system. And in Germany, about half the people end up going to technical schools and then half go to college, right? So they, it's a pretty good balance. Whereas here, you know, I, don't, I think the percentage is closer to like 60% go to college and maybe 40% don't. But that 40% that doesn't uh, probably doesn't go to technical school right away, right? What, no, you know, so tell me a little bit about technical school, because I, I personally don't know much about it. You know, <coughs> sure. what's the process like? Can you just get in? Do you just apply? How much does it cost? You know, so just say for sure. like so, electrician, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I have family members that are electricians, but typically you go to school, you get paid. So typically you go to school, like for an electrician, you go to school at night. So you get paid, you start as like a 50% apprentice. You actually get paid to learn the job. You on the work, job. Yeah, you work on the job for a company, like a, say a union electrician company. You get paid through the process. You go to school at night. Maybe you take algebra. You know, you take different classes they want you to take for uh, electrical curriculum. And then you get paid. And as you advance through each uh, process, you increase your, uh, your you know, apprentice one, scale. apprentice two. And oh, okay. yeah, your pay scale goes up. And uh, so that's typically you get paid to learn, you know. Um, and that's basically what I did in painting. I mean, I worked for my family, but I got paid to do the job and, you know, you become better at your job and you become an apprentice too, and you make an extra dollar an hour. So it, a lot of technical school programs are very similar to that. You actually get paid from day one generally as you're learning the job. And as you get better at your skills, your pay increases and your, and a lot of employers will actually pay for the technical training. You know, like if you're in school to be a, say here in Seattle, we have union machinists through Boeing and Boeing will actually pay their employees technical 
uh, school tuition to go to school. So. Yeah, no, I heard about that. So the, let me ask you this. So because taking it to the next level, because it's one thing to be, you, you know, tools on person that can get work done, whether you're an electrician or tile layer or, or carpenter or whatever it is, but it's another to be a business owner. So what kind of education did you have to get to be able to go from I paint houses and, and to I own a business that does everything now? So school of hard knocks for me, man. Uh, yeah. I learned everything the hard way. Um, really changed those when my wife and I partnered up together because she went, she has the business side. I have the, the you know, this technical side. But just a lot of online learning. I mean, I went to school for, I took some drafting classes. I went and learned how to read blueprints. So basically anything I needed to learn, I would take some sort of course online or, or read some sort of business book geared towards that, but didn't necessarily go to college. So like if I wanted to learn basic, you know, uh, blueprint reading, I went and took a blueprint reading class at the community college. So I didn't actually get a degree, but I, I furthered my education, but I didn't, you know, come out with a diploma at the other end. I just, uh, if I want to understand accounting, I would just read about accounting online, you know, cruel. Yeah, so that that's, it brings up a good point, right? Because having functional knowledge of a topic is different than saying, having a certificate that says that you have functional knowledge of a topic. Oh, agreed 100%. 100%. And so. it doesn't matter in your case, right? You're self-employed, you're your own boss, right? The only person yeah. you have to convince is the, you know, the bookkeeper at the end of the year that you made some money. No, exactly. And everything I've ever wanted to learn, I just, I mean, in this society, you can go to Google and you can practically get an MBA on any topic you want, you know, in three days, I'm kidding. But, uh, cause for me, I just need to understand the nuts and bolts. I don't need to understand the, the back end accounting of, you know, how you're filing your taxes. I just need to make sure what I'm doing is legal. Um, or, or you know, real estate law, I just need to understand that one law. I don't need to go to school to be a real estate attorney, understand every nuance of the law. So so, I mean, that brings up a good point. I mean, because, you know, you're trying to do it at a functional level, <clears throat> which is it is relevant, but for, and you don't have it to prove it to anyone, right? Because you're just trying to get it done. You need to get the understanding. You know, what's interesting though, is I looked into this because as online colleges and courses became available, a lot of people signed up for them. But guess what, sure. what percentage of people completed an online class? Maybe 20%. Less than 5%. Wow. Man, so you know, so there's something to be said about your mindset and motivation. You personally to be able to complete something because that puts you in the top five percent right there. Because most people are like, oh yeah, I'm interested in drafting or I'm interested in real estate law. And then they start the class, and when they're not one paying for it, two, they're not in a classroom. You know, that probably gives them less imp impetus to like finish it, right? Because they're sure. like, even online, you got to do some homework, you're right, and it might be grunt work. You got to do a bunch <laughs> of math equations or read some chapters or study some terms or whatever it is. Um, sure. but a lot of people don't get it done, you know, so it's, it, so it's a tough balance to say, yeah, you can just go online and get it done. But the problem is, is sure. that the way people are geared and, and wired and we've been programmed since, uh, since we were kids is that you go to a classroom and, and sure. you learn. Obviously now with this coronavirus, this is changing a lot, right? We're trying to oh, get yeah. kids to learn themselves the way you did. Let's log into a program. Let's log into PBS or Nat Geo or the science channel or whatever it is and see if we can find some coursework that'll work there. Um, yeah. we get, you know, for my little kids that I've got at home, we get like a little, little shoe boxes with science kits every week from a different organization where they send us different, different uh, uh, science kits to learn different stuff every week, which is cool because we've been at home and I don't ha just have science projects around, you know, so we're starting no, to get gosh. to that level where we're, we're figuring out how we can learn at home and, I'm, and we're tar starting to train our kids that you sure. can learn anything you want without having to go someplace and spend $60,000 a year to do it. No, agreed. And that's the other reason why I think that a technical school or, or hands-on learning can be so effective because also <clears throat> you're giving that motivation to learn by paying them, right? So if you're getting paid from day one for a trade and you, and you say, hey, I need to learn these 10 skills to get to step two and you're going to make a dollar more an hour, that motivates people. So I think the technical path or um, going to like an internship or something like that or apprenticeship program, those three kind of all tie in, you know, technical schools offer a lot of those, but those types of programs incentivize people to learn that maybe necessarily wouldn't get an associates of applied science or something like that uh, to learn because they're getting paid from day one. Cause I see a lot of my employees. I said, why'd you go into painting? And they said, well, you know, I got into it from a friend, but I was paid right off the bat. You know, I didn't have to go to school for four years and, you know, go into debt. So that's why a lot of people have actually ended up in our industry because they wanted to get right to work after high school. 
So Jeff, could you do something like engaging high school students? Let's say, you know, we're doing summer internships or come tag along for a week during a, a break to see if any of these types of jobs would be of interest to you before you commit to a four-year college and pay a bunch of money. Would, would you start consider offering programs like that? So yeah, I've actually been partnering with a technical, there's a technical high school in Seattle. I didn't have the best luck with it, but I had some kids come out and kind of shadow us. Uh, I need to get back into it. But yeah, we've really been trying to make a push to partner with a technical college here and a technical high school. But exactly with that, I think to get more people into the trades and industries, yeah, we really need to partner with, because that's the key. I mean, like, you know, if you want to be a dentist, you can go shadow a dentist in high school and say, ah, this is not for me or this is for me. Correct. And I don't think the trades or or technical programs have done that enough because when I was in high school, I went into a nursing office for the day to see if I wanted to be a nurse. And it just wasn't for me. You know, I went in for one day, a very nice lady shadowed me all day or let me shadow her. I mean, and uh, it wasn't for me. So I think being able to yeah. No, I, I just, I'm just thinking back to when I was like 16 years old and I, I volunteered at a hospital to figure out if I wanted to work in a hospital setting also. And uh, yeah. I remember the first day I was working in the emergency room and a dude came in carrying his finger in a Ziploc bag and he's like, I need help. I cut it off. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm sure you do. <laughs> I, I wasn't in an emergency room. We were more like just uh, going into different uh, rooms and just checking with patients and stuff but everyone had you know different back pain and different stuff i'm like okay i can't do this for the rest of my life no so. yeah same here I, I had a hard time with that i was like yeah this this is just isn't resonating with me i feel bad for the people that are hurt you know coming in or no. whatever it was but it just it wasn't a good fit for me one thing that really opened up my eyes to trades outside of my family being in the trades <laughs> my high school guidance counselor is really good about bringing different industries in she brought in a builder real estate investor a guy in a print shop and she let kids sit at a round table and have different business owners come in from all walks of life, you know, from people who own like a printing shop to a builder, to a real estate agent, to attorney. And you really got to like talk to them. And that's what a builder came in. And that's really outside of work with my family. That's really what opened up my eyes. You know, this guy went to college, he had an accounting degree and he said, I built houses in the summer. And he said, it paid a lot better. You know, as a general contract, this is, this guy is like old school from the seventies. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I graduated in 2000, the mid two thousands. And so he's at our school talking to us and, he says, I just started building a few houses after college, did accounting and did one on the side. And he says, I just never got out of it. He said it paid better. And he went to school and you know, this is 45 years ago that he went to school and he became a builder. And that guy is the first person to kind of open my eyes outside of my family that, Hey, you know, a trade and he learned carpentry, you know, through college, you know, just working part time. So that was kind of the first guy who kind of opened up my eyes saying, Hey, wow, trade can actually really be you know, a viable career without having to go to college. And it can be fun too, right? It's a lot, it's really satisfying because I, you know, I worked with a contractor when I was in high school and college as well um, to get a feel for it. And it was always, you know, it's super satisfying to even just paint one wall. I'm like, oh, nice. This is the wall is nice, fresh and clean. <laughs> exactly. Or you build a deck or you build a wine cellar or whatever, you know, the random projects that I did. I'm like, that was awesome. I spent two weeks doing it or two months doing it. And I built this incredible thing. Um, there, You do get that sense of satisfaction now that I own the business. I'm not hands-on as much. I'm not, you know, swinging hammers, but uh, yeah. I do I'm appreciate it. Anymore. You know, I'll find myself late at night watching uh, YouTube videos of guys like doing awesome craftsmanship. I'm like, man, that's pretty epic to see them take a, oh, a piece yeah. of metal and turn it into an awesome knife or some wood into some awesome furniture and, you know, shaving it down. And so there's definitely, you know, uh, I feel like there's an innate, um, sense of desire to be able to create within humans. And so with most of our jobs, whether you're an accountant or a businessman or salesperson, you know, you're not creating, you know, with your hands as much. And I feel like there's sure. something that's evolved in us to be able to accomplish and produce and, and, and develop something. So yeah, we need to tap into that more. I, I, I agree. I think that it's too expensive and it's a waste of resources <coughs> to spend too much money to go to college to figure it out. You know, so even with my own three kids, they've all got college funds set up, but I'm really hoping unless they say, Hey, we want to be an engineer or we need to be a lawyer or something that like definitively probably needs college, sure. you, you know, like we, they, we would spend that money for the first six months or a year, or a few years, whatever, figuring out what they want to do because going to college to figure it out and taking general ed classes is, is not, is it, I, I would advise every co- you know, high school counselor not to advise their students to do that. Right. Unless you go to co- community college and it's a few thousand dollars a year, it's something affordable before you can figure it out, you know, but uh, that this, this, the student loan debt itself is so scary and people don't think about that. You know, like my wife is a physical therapist, so she had to rack up a couple hundred thousand dollars in debt before she could become a physical therapist and work at a hospital to make $45 an hour. 
You know, sure. it sounds like a lot, but it's not when you have to pay a couple hundred thousand dollars in debt off. Sure. Right? So then it's like, well, man, I, could you go to technical school for twenty thousand dollars and end up making a hundred thousand dollars a year? You, you know, that math equation works a lot better. Granted, she loves her job and that's why she does it because she loves fixing people, you know, that are broken. Yeah. Um, but you know, it just, it makes you think that maybe I shouldn't go and spend a hundred thousand dollars or more getting a business degree or an economics degree or social, you know, sociology degree to do, <laughs> to get a job that might pay $25,000 a year. Sure. Well, and I understand too, like if you're going to be an attorney or a doctor, you have to be specialized, right? I get it. My father-in-law is an aerospace engineer. My brother-in-law is, so I understand that. Right. Um, but how many kids don't go to college <laughs> that have the potential to be really succeed in life? but didn't go to a, a, they didn't get into a trade. They didn't get a career and they're just, you know, working at minimum wage job. You know, there's so many untapped people that maybe could have really succeeded. You know, maybe you get into a, a plumber's role and you're a foreman or whatever, but there's so many people in our society, kids that have potential that didn't go to college that I think a technical school or a trade school, you know, or, or getting a viable career would really open up for them. You know? Yeah, so it's kind of absolutely. absolutely. It's, it's tough to figure out what you want to do for the rest of your life when you're in high school. And it's probably true of books. A lot of people, people change careers a lot, you know, but it's probably better to, to switch from a career where you don't have to pay a bunch of debt uh, for your student sure. loan to figure it out. Cause you know, I, yeah. I've seen in stats in the past that 75% of law, law degree students like don't end up becoming lawyers. Like they might get a job, but they might be a waiter or something for the next few sure. years. Uh, yeah. And meanwhile, they have a $250,000 law degree debt. Um, yeah. So that's kind of brutal too, you know, because there's a lot of lawyers out there and, and, you know, maybe we need more. I'm not sure. You know, I don't know what the, the glut is, but I for sure know we need more plumbers, electricians, tile layers, oh, yeah. and, and, and skilled tradesmen because there's a massive shortage of that. There is. I mean, ever so the Great Recession, <clears throat> they said after 2007 or eight, there was a, about... 35 to 40% of the people left the trades and found new industries and never came back. So we went into the great recession. Um, that's why we have a, a huge shortage gap too. Like we have the average tradesperson is like 28 to 32 right now, or they're above 55. There's not a lot of in between because all those people that were 35 to 45 that were in the trades before the great recession, you know, in 2009 and 10, they, most of them left, you know, a good chunk. So there's definitely a shortage of viable labor and there's no shortage of pain. I mean, there's a lot of good jobs. So yeah, for sure. Just, I mean, yeah, it's, it's true. If you can, if you can work hard and you know stuff and you can get better at it. I mean, it's the same thing when I, I tell people that work with me, like, Oh, how'd you get so good at this? I'm like, it's simple. They're like, well, yeah, what's the answer? I was like, practice. You got to do it a lot. You do something a lot. You get better at it. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, That's the key. Yeah. You just can't come out the gate. I'm like, I'm a great painter. I'm like, no, it takes a little bit of practice to be able to cut a line properly and, and oh, yeah, yeah. texture it and sand it and prep it. And, yeah. It just takes, I mean, it's repetition man. I started painting it. 14 years old for my family and yep. here I am at 31. Well, the thing that's crazy is, I mean, I have, I think nine or 10 employees of mine have degrees and outside of my wife who does our, she's our financial controller. Uh, she went to school for accounting. My sales guy's got a degree in sociology, I think, or her poli sci maybe. And he's a sales guy, you know, using yep. his degree for something opposite. But we have lots of employees that paint in the field that have college degrees, but don't use their degree. You know, they're painting because it's a more viable source at the time. So. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Jeff, I appreciate you spending some time with me. I, I think you make a great point here. I, I, I agree with your theory that we should try to get people to explore more non-college options for their life choices uh, before you commit to such a massive debt. You know, that's one of the counseling things. I, I just told a, a, a foster ch organization, a foster child organization, that I'd be happy to go speak to their kids about some financial education and literacy about reading credit reports and how, how right. loans work and things like that, but also to the point of how student loans work. And do you really want to take on a student loan if you don't know that you want to be something specifically that definitively needs a college degree? So, I um, it, yeah. I, you know, I, I think that's important message to shout from the rooftops and tell people too, because, um, you, you know, it was that mindset that typically my parents' mindset in, in, around that age, everyone was just told, you kids got to go to college, otherwise they're going to become right. a loser or something, or they're going to be a waste. Yeah, exactly. you know, which definitely is not the case. You could be a super productive person and not have a psychology degree. No, agreed. And I, and I think college is good. You know, if you want to, I mean, if you know what the path you want, college is great. I just don't think it's one size fits all anymore. And just, that's my theory. You know, it's like, there's just so many options. There's, you know, five different ways to be successful. You know, your son could be a, a boiler maker and be just as respectable as, you know, your other son who's an accountant, you know, 
True. And, and I think those kind of old cliches that different jobs have different status really need to go away because I think any job that you're working at um, is an honorable job. You know, if you're working to Agreed. clean toilets and, and you just do it with a grin on your face and you, you, you understand the importance of your job, that's an important job just as much as it is to install the toilet or, you know, to own the house that has it, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Um, I, I think that every job is a respectable, honorable job. And, and if you do it with some pride and you care, uh, that's all that matters. Uh, just find your passion in life and enjoy it, right? That's that's kind of what no, it comes I, to. I agree, man. I love it. Hello. Cool, Jeff. Thank you for joining me on this episode of I've Got a Theory. Uh, please comment, like, and subscribe. Jeff, thanks for joining in. We'll, we'll catch up with you sometime soon, I'm sure. Thank you so much. Yeah, take care. All right, take care. Bye.